Thank you for having me. Thank you, Seratia, and thank you for the state of Alabama for having me here today. It's quite an honor to stand up here and, and talk to you folks, so I just want to just thank you for that. Um, I was talking to Seratia and Danita uh, this morning, and they were, we were joking, or I think they were joking with me, and they said that, Will, uh, we look forward to, to hearing your part uh, because this is the highlight of the um, conference, but I think we all know that's not true. Um, the highlight of the conference has been hearing from these families that have um, <laughs> that have benefited from the advancements in newborn screening. And um, I just want to say, from a manufacturer um, who is far removed from um, the results end of uh, the business, that was awesome. Uh, I, I really appreciate it. It really kind of brings home what I do and makes me understand why I do what I do. So again, thank you all for sharing your story um, with us all. Um, so I'm not here to talk about that, but I am here to talk about the filter paper. Um, and what I want to do is kind of walk you through the process that we do um, from the manufacturing of the 903 paper um, as it's tested at the paper mill, how it's packaged, how it's um, shipped to us, how we receive it, uh, how we handle it during the, pr the manufacturing process, um, and package it and ship it to you guys. So that's kind of what we're going to do today. So uh, before we go into that, I just kind of want to tell you a little bit about who we are. Uh, we were founded in 1964, uh, and at the time, our primary focus was to serve the textile industry in the southeast. Uh, in 1968, a group of doctors from New York, North Carolina, and Duke University approached us. Uh, they had some, uh, some paper that they wanted to see if we could uh, run through our presses uh, to manufacture a medical device for dried blood spots. Uh, so we took the paper and uh, through trial and error, um, running it through our presses, doing some different tests, we were, a we were able to develop a, a satisfactory uh, dried blood spot product. Uh, a year later, we produced our first product for testing in the state of North Carolina. Uh, we soon began to sell regionally in the southeast. Uh, since that time, we've grown our business uh, not only here in the United States, but worldwide. So let's talk a little bit about 903 paper. I know you've used it all. You, you see it, the name on the, on the forms that you use. And, um, so I want to talk a little bit about what 903 paper is. And um, uh, as you probably could guess, it's a cotton-based paper, which makes it very absorbent. Um, and we have it manufactured from a mill that has over 30 years' experience. So they've been doing this for 30 years, and they perfected the cotton blend. So I'm going to talk a little bit about cotton. I, I don't want to go into too much, but I do want to kind of give you a basis of what, what we're talking about here. Uh, cotton fibers vary from region to region in the United States, and specifically in the Southeast. Uh, 903 paper is made up of short and long-range cotton fibers, and along with a percentage of shaved cotton fibers from the seed. And of course, this has uh, been perfected from years and years of the same manufacturer, and it is proprietary, but they've been doing it for a long time, so the consistency is there from uh, mill to mill. Uh, the cotton blend, combined with water, of course, uh, comprises the paper slurry that's used for producing the paper. And because they've been doing this for so long, uh, they have the most consistent paper on the market. However, having said that, filter paper in its very nature is, is, is unstable. Um, and that's why it's always a good, it's, it's a good uh, uh, paper to use for blood absorption, but it is unstable. And so during the manufacturing process of our cards, we have to be mindful of that. And I'll get into that a little bit as we go along, but um, that does kind of contradict itself, but I'll explain that later. So what are the factors that affect blood absorption of 903 paper that us as a manufacturer has to be aware of? First, and the biggest, is paper contamination. And the biggest uh, contaminant threat is glue. Uh, we, we have to make sure that there's no glue that is inside uh, the filter paper at all and specifically in the blood spot areas. Um, that could definitely contaminate um, the test results. So that's something we have to be very mindful of. 
Inks is another thing, um, and I'm not talking about the ink that you use to print the circles. That's a non-biological ink. I'm talking about the inks that we use to print on the demographic section. That's something we have to be mindful of and, and make sure that that doesn't come into the test area. Uh, the second one is paper compression or calendaring. Uh, the paper in its very nature is very absorbent, which is what we want, but when we compress it, either during production or during uh, any other uh, stretching it, that can affect absorption, so we have to account for that. And thirdly is the environment that it's under, um, temperature and humidity. We, we do have certain parameters that we keep our warehouse at while we're producing it, and I'll, I'll get into that in a minute. But those, those are the three biggest ones that we have to be uh, cognizant of as we're um, producing uh, your forms. What happens to the filter paper before it arrives to us? Uh, first, it's tested by the manufacturer. Um, and during this manufacturing of the paper, an independent QC team is there, including representatives from our company. Um, here you see the certificate of analysis that um, the paper mill uh, summarized. And that's basically, uh, it's hard to read on, on my slide here, but they're just testing for the, the absorption of the paper, the moisture content, the ash content, those kind of things. Uh, additionally, the CDC requests a master reel, and they want to test it, do an independent test. So um, you can see here their certificate analysis. They're, again, testing uh, for absorption of paper, the, the blood spot diameter, and how, how it's measured against the CLSI standards. Thirdly, we want to test it. So we've got three people testing it before it's even used. Uh, we're testing it here for blood absorbency. Uh, as you can see here, we, we, we take the, uh, a master reel in, and this is a reel that we just recently um, passed, and uh, we tested it for uh, blood absorption and blood spot diameter. Uh, in addition to that, we also want to test the paper for stretch and stability, and I mentioned that earlier in my slide presentation. Um, what we're basically testing for is how, how is the paper going to react to stress as it's run through our presses. Because it's very um, elastic, we don't want to stretch it too much uh, for, for several reasons. So what we did here is, this is our master roll, we slid it into smaller reels, um, five and a half inch reels. And if you look there, you've got DO, that stands for dead on. Uh, that was stretched the least amount. Uh, then we went a 32nd short, 16th uh, short, and an 8th short. That means we stretched it to different degrees. And what we're measuring here is how, you know, what does the, the stretch, the, um, the, str uh, the stress that we're putting the paper under, how is that going to affect things? So we came back the next day and measured, measured it against what it was. So what was dead on yesterday is, has now grown a sixteenth of an inch. Uh, what was a thirty-second short yesterday is now a thirty-second long. It, it moved a sixteenth. Came back uh, forty-eight hours later, measured again. Again, you can see it's moving a little bit. Um, and then, lastly, uh, six days we check it again. You can see it didn't it didn't come back to exactly where it was, but this is considered uh, pretty stable. Um, anything over a, a sixteenth of an inch either way is considered unstable and would be hard for us to use in manufacturing. So you're probably saying, well, this means I don't know what you're talking about. This is crazy. I, you know, I, I, don't, I can't visualize this. So I've got a picture here. This is a form that we were recently running. And you can see on the top there, that's the demographic section. Uh, and directly underneath there is the filter paper. Um, we had completed this job, but I wanted to do this as an exercise so you would kind of hopefully understand what I mean about stretch. Um, I had the pressman purposely stretch the filter paper a lot. Uh, and as you can see on, on the pinwheel here, everything looks fine. Uh, everything lines up and it's, it's going to work. However, I took another picture about four feet down. You, you can see where that eighth of an inch can get out of registration, and that's considered very... Uh, unstable, which would be hard to run. So we have to account for that, and there's some proprietary things that we do to allow us to um, account for that. How do we handle the paper from the receipt in our warehouse to the manufacturing of the cards to finally when we ship it? 
uh, all our master rolls come well protected from the manufacturer, uh, and they come protected in a heavy wax paper. And that heavy wax paper is basically protecting it from the elements, uh, creating a moisture barrier while it's in transport. Uh, when we bring it in, we have it inspected, and if there's any visible damage to the, to the reels, we will refuse it. And if you look closely, you can see on the, the reel on the left and the one on the third to the left there, you see a couple of dings there. We refuse that paper. Um, we don't want, you know, again, that, could, that calendaring could be affected there, but most importantly, uh, being exposed to the environment and gosh knows where it went from there and what uh, weather conditions it was under. So we, we refuse those. So we, we we're always looking to make sure that um, there's no visible damage to the paper. Uh, I mentioned temperature and humidity. This is our um, temperature and humidity uh, monitor, uh, which constantly, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, is, is checking the temperature and humidity in our facility. If it comes out of tolerance, uh, our facilities manager will make adjustments. Um, we typically, anytime the temperature gets over 85 degrees or the humidity is over 60, percent is out of tolerance for us. Uh, Alabama sends us an order, hopefully, and uh, we enter it into, into our system. Uh, the 903 rolls are, are assigned, and so then the master rolls, the 50-inch master rolls, are moved into our slitting area. The master rolls are then loaded onto our, our paper slitter, and the reels are slit according to the job specification. So you can see this master reel had, uh, was that one, two, three, four, five, about eight, eight nine streams of, of filter paper. Uh, each slit reel is labeled and to include the master reel and the job number. So if you'll look on there on the right, inside the core of these reels, we have the master roll and then the job number it's going to. Again, this is to, so we can have 100% traceability back to a specific job. We know what reel was used. Uh, slit reels are then packaged back into a protective bag and carton to await manufacturing. A lot of times when we slit our paper, there might be a four or five day lag time before it goes on the press. Um, we have a pretty clean environment at our facility, but we don't want to expose it to uh, dust or any other contaminants. So we want to keep it clean uh, while it waits uh, manufacturing. All right, during manufacturing, uh, and printing of the medical device, we, we do in periodic inspection. Uh, this is what we call a tear sheet. And a tear sheet is taken off the beginning of each reel that we use. And what they're doing here is they're gonna, they're gonna test it to see what the stress of being run through our press, what it did to the thickness. So they're taking a micrometer and they're measuring it to see you know, if we stressed it too much. Again, that can affect absorption. So, we're testing, I don't think you can read it real well here, but they test it in three different areas there to make sure it's within tolerance. Uh, they also note the number range if the, if the form is numbered, which 90% of ours are. They're gonna note the number range on that so we can have 100% uh, traceability back to a roll. So if you guys call me and say, hey Will, you know, I got form number 125,000 that's uh, not doing well, we can pull our tear sheet and find out what role was actually used. Again, 100% traceability. Okay, so after the cards are printed and manufactured, uh, we take QC samples that are pulled from the beginning, middle, and end of the job, and they're taken to our QC final inspection area to, uh, to undergo some inspections. Uh, here they're inspected for construction quality. Uh, gosh, it's hard for me to read, but basically what, what they did here is they took we had 10, 10 cards from the beginning, 10 from the middle, and 10 from the end. And we have a QC inspector who's checking for print quality. Uh, I think glue is one of them. Uh, again, we're making sure that there's no glue in the filter area, uh, as, well as, the, as well as to make sure it's constructed well, that we've got good uh, glue adhesion from the filter paper to the demographics, because we don't want that to be detached. That's a major problem. Um, print quality, I think paper quality is the other one. So we're checking for a lot of things to make sure that there's continued, continuing um, quality. Print quality is good from the beginning, middle, and end of the job. Okay, so after the QC tester does her testing, uh, it's time to test the cards for absorbency. So they're taken to our blood lab for further testing.
Uh, here we're testing the paper for a couple things. Um, the speed of how well it absorbs and also uh, the blood spot diameter. Make sure it's, uh, it's within specs. And <clears throat> as you can see, the CLSI standards are 5 to 30 seconds, which is a huge range. And, and the diameter is 15 to 17. So that's what we're checking when our, when our cards go up to um, our QC area. Just to tell you a little bit about our blood lab, uh, I, I know you guys are probably experts in this and we're not, but, but uh, we do use human whole blood, which is uh, supplied by an approved supplier um, that meets the CLSI NBS S01 A6 standards for NBS programs. Uh, it comes um, adjusted emetically 55% from one donor and it has a 30 day expiration. Uh, and of course we keep it uh, in the lab uh, at a temperature of 35 to 47 degrees. Uh, the instrument that we use to dispense the blood is, the, is a micropipette, and it comes calibrated to eject exactly 100 microliters of blood um, to, should give us a 15 to 17 millimeter circle. Uh, our phlebotomist is responsible for conducting the testing, and I think someone earlier mentioned uh, the gloves, and of course we use non-powdered gloves too, that, that was a good suggestion, but we always use the non-powdered gloves there. Okay, so blood absorbency time and diameter is recorded. Uh, this particular job um, was fairly recently. Uh, you can see there was 20 uh, tests that were done, and the average here was 10.1 seconds. Again, comfortably in the five to 30 second um, range that the CLSI requires. Blood spot diameter was, I think that's 16 to 17, again, well within the, uh, the parameters. Uh, just to summarize, uh, before we can ship the, the product, uh, it has to meet the CLSI standards. Again, I mentioned that, five to 30 seconds and 15 to 17 uh, millimeter diameter circle. Um, I don't have the data here, but our one-year average absorbency time over the past year is about in the eight to 10 seconds. So um, that's good. You know, we, we don't want it, and I know you guys can attest to this, you don't want to be holding a screaming baby with, with trying to get the blood absorbed, you know, when it takes 30 seconds. So we're, we're, we want to keep it in that eight to 10 range. Okay, so uh, it's, it's been, it's been um, approved and it's ready to be shipped uh, and it's ready to be packaged. So uh, all our cards come uh, loose wrapped in 50s or 100s uh, in, in the plastic uh, covering that protects it. And your cards are, uh, even give more protection where you use envelopes. So that's, that's even more protection. That's great. Uh, the packs are then placed in our shipping cartons. And then our cartons are placed on pallets, uh, no more than three high. Uh, we use corner braces to support the skid and uh, we put straps around them uh, before they're shrink wrapped. So you can see there, you know, we, we, we go to great measures to protect it um, while it's in transport. And of course, we'd like to put on our pallets, do not stack. Um, we uh, we want to put make, make it perfectly clear to the truck trucker that, uh, you know, this is a medical device and it can't be stacked. It's, it's uh, handled with care. However, um, you know, we can go through great lengths to do that, but uh, this does happen. Um, this particular job was going to Missouri, and uh, it was about 10, I think it was about 10 skids. Uh, it came in, they, they called us right away and said, Will, we've got a problem. Um, uh, this is what happened. Of course, they took pictures, we sent it, we, our QC team looked at it, um, and we determined that there were three pallets that were bad, um, and obviously these were two of them. Um, so we had them shipped back to us, the, the affected pallets, broke them open, did a 100% inspection, um, did some blood testing on some of them to see how, obviously, that second skid there with the open cards um, were replaced. Um, but we wanted to test them to see how that was affected. And like I said, there was about 1,000 that were affected. We replaced them, boxed them back, shipped them back to them uh, about a week or two later. So, you know, I say all that to, to you know, just emphasize the point. If, if this happens to you guys, 
you, we need to hear about it. Uh, don't just assume that everything's fine or oh, that's, that's just a little nick. You know, we, we don't need to worry about that because the last thing we want, and you would agree, is for you to get these forms into the lab that have been um, contaminated and have a bad test result. That's, I think we're all in agreement that we don't want that to happen. So, you know, I I'm, I'm encourage you to talk to your, the warehouseman that receives them, let them know, you know, to contact you and Soratia can call me and we can talk about it and we can make arrangements. But we, we want to, um, communication is key here. And in the case of uh, Missouri, it was, um, it was great communication. So I want to make sure that y'all know that and can pass that on to the people that need to know. Okay, so what are some things that you guys can do to protect uh, your cards and ensure that you're getting good readings? Uh, number one, limit the handling of your filter paper. Uh, I think it's been mentioned earlier today. You know, you don't, the more you touch it, the more opportunities it can uh, have to be contaminated. So you want to keep that to a minimum. Uh, keep out of direct sunlight for any length of time. If they're, if they're in sunlight for too long, uh, that can break down the chemical properties of the filter paper. Now, you know, an, an hour in the sun or by the window is not going to be bad, but I'm talking about over a long period of time. Uh, do not store in a high humidity environment. I know we live in the south, and um, I'm sure your warehouses are not air conditioned. I'm talking about 80% or higher humidity. Um, that can affect blood absorption, so I, I did want to mention that. Um, one practical thing you can do is allow the cards, if you know you're going to need a box, allow the cards 24 hours to come into the air-conditioned um, hospital to be acclimated before you're using them, especially if they're coming from a real hot warehouse. Um, uh, also, do not stack cartons more than three high. Again, that can, um, that can affect the, you know, the weight of the cartons if they're not on shelving, can affect the, uh, the absorption because it can counter the paper if they were to crush. So you don't want to put too much weight on the bottom carton. Uh, in the lab, you want to avoid storing near any sources of heat. Uh, infant monitors, computer monitors, uh, uh, heat returns, um, you, know, you don't want to keep them there for any length of time. Uh, also in the lab, uh, you want to keep away from any water sources, sinks, food, drink, etc. cetera. Uh, goes without saying, I'm sure you guys know that, but I just thought it, it bears mentioning um, to do so. So that, that's basically our, um, our process that we go through to, to produce your forms. Um, again, I wanna, I wanna stress communication is very important. Um, if you have a problem, we need to know about it because if we don't, um, we don't know how to fix it. So um, I just implore you to communicate with me or with us so that we can, um, we can fix it. Uh, I thank you again for letting me come speak. I hope this has been helpful to you, um, and I hope we can um, um, be of help in the future. Thank you. Everybody have a good weekend.